Okay, now let's talk about your foundation. What are you focusing on? Every year I will go and I will do 100 surgeries. The next year I go, there's still more 100 patients that I couldn't get to, and I will go with a big team. So I realized that, you know, yes, you can go and do short trip surgeries, but that doesn't really increase capacity locally. So the foundation called the Foundation for Special Surgery, our focus is to actually build a facility that trains people locally so that we can get experts trained in Ghana, in Nigeria, from the West African region, Sub-Saharan region, coming to this place and learning sub something very specialized and keeping it in the area. To me, that's the way that we can make a long-lasting impact. I was uh, able to read a book that you wrote, the first book where you, you speak about your personal journey. Very, very fascinating story. What would you say about this book? Um, you know, I've written a few books. Most of them have been scientific. This was quite difficult to do because you have to change from writing like a scientist to really be a storyteller. The experience has been illuminating to me. It's just seeing where I came from, what my parents taught me, the stories they passed on to me, and how I got to where I am. However far the stream flows. This is an, an African proverb, right? There is an African proverb that says, however far the stream flows, it never forgets its source. My dad, when I was leaving Ghana, called me and said, I want to tell you a story that my mom told me. And the story goes this way, that when he was leaving his village, his mother called him to his small clay-touched hut and told him to look at where she sleeps and said, when you go to the big city, don't forget where your mother sleeps. So do not forget where you started from so that if you get big, don't let your head get too big. What would people get out of reading this book? The, the first thing I hope people do get out of the, this is that, one, it's important not to give up on your dreams. Second thing is not to underestimate small acts. Small acts, like somebody just stopping when they were jogging to ask me, what are you going to do next year? That's what my professor did. Or someone and looking at a kid who everybody thought was the village fool, the village idiot because he couldn't speak properly just because he had something we call a tight, tight tongue a thick friend alum and once you snip it the kid starts talking again small acts like my mom prays for us every morning lastly don't let anybody tell you no when you look at uh, your journey and so many young people in africa dreaming of coming to the u.s or any other countries where they think they could pursue a career but they're they're coming across challenges what would be your advice uh, to them what i would say is that you have to learn to be able to dream beyond your borders, beyond boundaries. To me, initially, when I thought this is what I wanted to do, it seemed like there was a very tall wall, too tall that I could look over. But if you set your sights on what you want to do, along comes people who see the effort you're putting in, and I've had people sort of support me along the way. So what I'll tell, to pe tell people who are trying from Africa or from any part of the world is that set your goals higher than you can ever think and just pursue it and make sure that every step gets you closer to that goal.